the Lord, beloved of the Most High God. I want to speak to you again today about the rapture. A more doctrinal error that people are putting forth with the twisting of scriptures, and I just have to speak on it. Someone put up a video not too long ago that said that, uh, you know, there are going to be Christians, many Christians that are going to be left behind. Now, if you're only using that term Christian, like the way Jehovah Witnesses say they're Christian, they're not. They don't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They don't believe in the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mormons say they're Christian. They're not they don't believe in the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. When they say certain things or buzzwords, sometimes Christians think that it means the same thing as we understand doctrinally, and it doesn't. They are in a cult that is very deceptive and teaches deception through treachery and lies. Now, I can't get all into it. There are plenty of people here on YouTube that expose the lies of Mormonism. And every false religion works under deception because it is straight out of the pit of hell and it is under the tutelage, the inspiration, and the direction of Satan himself. That's why the Bible says that God hates every false way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man will come to the Father but by him. Now, the scripture that was referenced in this particular video that I find just ridiculous is the person said, if my words abide in you, and you abide in me, this is supposed to be some kind of evidence that you are you are uh, truly, I was wondering, uh, truly saved. And if you are just this wonderful Christian that just does everything that you can to just be right and do right, that this will qualify you to go in the rapture. And it's a bunch of hogwash, a bunch of bull. Bull. They don't finish the scripture. If my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. This is talking about discipleship. It is not talking about salvation nor the rapture. They completely negate the scripture that tells you exactly what the qualifier is for the rapture in the very passage that is talking about the rapture. Now, this is what I find astounding because by definition, the Bible defines itself as a matter of divine inspiration so that we can't go astray if we will carefully study the word of truth but people insist on inserting their doctrinal error which is really work salvation now there are two ways that this is done the first way is the John MacArthur's the John Piper's the Paul Washer's with work salvation right up front Lordship salvation the second way is a much more subtle way Jimmy Swagger does this uh, Jack Van Impey does this, and a host of other people. And you'll hear it, but it's subtle. And it's backloaded salvation. And they'll say, you're saved by grace, but they always have to say, but. No, let me tell you something. Anybody that says you're saved by grace and then says, but, run in the other direction. Don't even let them finish the sentence. When it's concerning salvation, there is no but. You are saved by grace through faith, period. In the Lord Jesus Christ, if, if that is where your faith is placed, there is no but ever. Never, ever. Jesus did not say, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then are you really saved. Then you'll go in the rapture. Those words are not found in the Bible. They have to twist the scriptures to fit their works salvation point of view to bring that convoluted understanding together. Okay, so here we go again. Let's look at what the scripture says plainly. But when this plain sense of scripture makes sense, seek no other sense or you end up with nonsense. 
Let's look at First Thessalonians chapter four. Let's start with verse thirteen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Now this is speaking of believers who have died in faith. Believers who are died in Christ. And he's saying, you don't have to sorrow. And here's why. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to read the rest of this passage, but I want to stop right here and and interject emphatically that this is a declarative statement. And this declaration is not based on the Apostle Paul. It is not based on me. It is not based on you. It is based on the promise of God himself. Paul is revealing what has been a mystery before now. God has given him this direct word to tell to the saints of God who would be living in the end times, the promise of the rapture. And in verse 14 where he says, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He doesn't say, but if your words, if his words abide in you and you abide in him, will he bring with you? It doesn't say if you really have faith for the rapture, will he bring you with him? Let's read it for what it says. Not as it is imagined, but as it is written. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. That is a declarative statement, my friend. God is the one making the guarantee. And he is not a man that he should lie. Do not let people who do not understand the scriptures, who are misinterpreting scriptures based on a backloaded work salvation point of view or a front-loaded work salvation point of view, trouble you. Their perspective is skewed because they do not believe in free grace. They believe, yeah, we're saved by grace through faith, but Anybody that says that, when you hear but, run in the other direction. Because what they're about to do is backloaded work salvation. They're going to say, but you need to do all these things to show that you are truly saved. And I've told you before, when John, uh, excuse me, James is speaking of the good works that uh, are to be manifested in the life of the believer, you go read it, go read the whole book of James. If you find a scripture in there, I want you to email me that says there is a timetable. I want you to give me the chapter and verse as to the timetable. Is it five minutes, five days, five weeks, five months, five years, or 50 years, or 500 years, however long a person lives? How much time do they get before they must perform these so-called good works? And what if you are? I never see it. Let's continue with verse 15. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord. He is establishing this is not his own thing here. God himself told him this. So that means the previous verse is the same thing. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18, wherefore, comfort, not trouble, 
comfort one another with these words. And the only time you hear these people talk this garbage. Oh, the Christians are, so many Christians are going to be left behind. Let me tell you something. Jesus himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, they are contradicting the Lord Jesus Christ himself. To leave you, what did they say? Some Christians will be left behind. I, Jesus speaking, will never leave you. Nor, I love how he interjects this. He didn't just say leave. He said nor forsake. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of time. Okay. Please tell me how he's going to forsake his beloved. They don't believe that a person who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, they don't believe that's enough, people. It's all about works for these people. It is not grace through faith in Christ alone. They want to interject works. Your qualification to go in the rapture is your salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, period. Because the purpose of the rapture is for him to redeem what is his and give us the glorified bodies that are necessary for the next chapter to rule and reign with Christ. We cannot do it in corruptible flesh. We have to be changed so that there will be no shadow of turning in us and no temptation. This is how Jesus, during the thousand-year millennium, is going to rule with a rod of iron. But the work salvationists cannot, cannot believe that. And they will trouble you if you let them, believers, beloved of the Most High God. Our God does not want us to be troubled. He wants us to rest assured in the provision of the Lord Jesus Christ. That we are complete in Him. See, you and I did not place ourselves in Jesus. He placed us in Him. This is a work that only God can do. For by grace are ye saved through Faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is your faith in Christ alone that saves you from hell, and it is your faith in Christ alone that qualifies you for the rapture. So many Christians are so worried about what somebody else is doing. But when we go to get our reward before the Lord, that's when the wood, hay, and stubble get burned up. The things that were works of the flesh get burned up. And the things that we did for God, that will be the gold, the silver, and the precious stone. And they keep wanting to make it about salvation. And it's so detestable. And they want to throw people under the bus and say, God is going to abandon his beloved. It's a lie. And the reason they want you to be troubled is because they're troubled. They don't have any peace, and they don't want you to have any peace. Don't believe their lies. Believe the Bible. If you belong to Jesus, and you believe that he died and rose again and he's the savior of the world and he paid for your sin you're saved and you're going with him I don't care what you've done I don't care what you struggle with that is his promise because he the Lord Jesus Christ is faithful that promise I said it before I never get tired of saying it I'll say it again he is the only one that will wear the name Faithful and true for all eternity. Not me and not you. The Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's the only one that is faithful to 
to the bitter end. I know there are people that think, oh, I'm fa- I want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Who doesn't? But that's for him to say, not you. And these people run around saying it of themselves, how faithful they are. They don't want to point the finger at everybody else because they can seem dirt on somebody and say, they're not faithful. It's not for you to say. This is for God to say. That's all I have to say on the matter. Beloved of the Most High God, be comforted that Jesus got you. It's Him we're trusting in, clinging to, and relying on. No one and nothing else. And when He says, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, come up hither. If you're His, you're going. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in Jesus' name, amen.